All right. Well, hi, everybody. We'll, we'll try this again. If you were watching just a few seconds ago, we had a little technical difficulty, but uh, John is a genius and he gets it all worked out. And so we're ready to go. But I want to welcome you again. And thank you for coming and joining in with us here for our uh, First Baptist West Facebook Live. We're really excited about tonight. This is, as I said, this is our, I think, our fourth week of of doing uh, our Facebook Live, and we're excited about getting to it, and and uh, want to give credit. Uh, John is actually the. This is his format. This is the idea for his, that he came up with. I wanted to do a uh, Facebook Live, but John said, "Hey, let's try it this way," and because we wanted something that was unique and something that's fun, kind of lighthearted, kind of give us a a midweek break. And so uh, I, we hope you're enjoying this, and hope that you'll continue to tune in. I know we have a lot of people watching, and Lenny is here, and. Uh, Sheila and Jeremy, Will, uh, Sherry, Ed, uh, Kathy, uh, Diana, so uh, Jenna Rowe, Cobb, good to have you all the way from the other side of the country, but uh, we're just glad to have all of you here. So throughout this night, if you have stuff that's going on, uh, you'd like to comment or ask questions, uh, we have people that are manning this and they can get my attention because sometimes I get so focused I lose track of where I am. But we're going to have a good time tonight. Uh, we have some special people with us uh, during our show. Uh, one is uh, Susan Thompson will be here in just a little bit. and She's going to be talking to us about a great ministry opportunity that First Baptist West is now involved in. And uh, she's going to be coming sharing that with you. And we also have uh, tonight... Uh, Brother Troy Taylor, he's our director of missions, a good friend of mine, and he's going to be joining us, and he was so kind to accept the invitation to come and be on here with us tonight. So we, we've got some great things happening. But I do want to share with you, though, uh, four things that I think you need to know uh, as church members. Oh, there's Paula Green, Shelly, good to see you. Mark, good to have you here with us. From Hawaii, Mark Wallace. Uh, hey, tell your family hi, Mark. It was good to see you. And remember, I need to come do a pastoral visit. Let me know when would be a good time, and I'll get the church to send me down there, so I'll come minister to y'all. But there are four things that I want you to, uh, to know about. The first thing is our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. As you know, we've been taking that up for this whole time, and due to the fact of us not being able to get, be in church on a regular basis like we have been, we're going to go ahead and extend the Easter offering uh, throughout the end of this month. And if you will go, and you can even give through e-giving that we've created that line item again for you because we're really wanting to make sure that everyone has an opportunity uh, to do the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. So please remember that. Be in prayer for our missionaries uh, here uh, in North America and also around the world. So keep that in your mind. So that's one of the things we need you to know. The second thing we want you to know is that we're now part of the M28. We know it as the Bridge Ministry. Uh, the M28 Ministries, they're feeding the people in need here in Lawton at the Bridge House. So First Baptist West, now we've been a part of the Bridge Ministry for several, for a year or more, a couple of years even. But what we're doing now is we've extended that to where we're going to be a part of helping them feed. They feed six days a week. And so we're going to be taking a day that we're going to be preparing food, taking it over there and serving uh, the people in need. And, and last this today, they served how many people? 280. 280 people were in need. So that number is projected to go up uh, just a little bit. And so uh, we're going to be talking about that here. And Susan's going to be sharing some more information with you on that here in just a little bit. Third thing we need you to know is that VBS is going to happen. Uh, last year we had it at the, at the end of May, 1st of June, but due to all the situations that are going on and the problems that we're having of meeting and uh, groupings, we're going to change that. We've already rescheduled it, and that is going to be moved to July 19th. Uh, so we'll start on that Sunday night. That should give us plenty of time to plan uh, to prepare. If you're wanting to help us in any way, please start calling us. Call Carrie. She'll be glad to uh, uh, have you signed up and, and help, but also start inviting kids and letting them uh, be a part of our Vacation Bible School. But we are having it this summer, and it's going to be on July 19th. Now, the last thing that, the fourth thing that I, I want you to know is that tomorrow uh, our, pre, our children's department is doing a very special Zoom scavenger hunt tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Now, we want you to be a part of that, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But now, in order to be a part of our scavenger hunt, you have to be uh, a part of our uh, 
ministry team, a ministry group through Facebook, but that's the private section page. So if you want to get somebody, get some kids involved, they don't have to be even attending First Baptist West, but if you would like them to be involved in this scavenger hunt, which again is going to be pretty cool, I've already told Carrie, I want to be a part of it. So I'm going to be joining in. So we want to encourage you to join in, but you have to contact the church office and we can send an invitation to you to be a part of our private page because our children's, our preschool, and our youth Facebook pages are all private pages. But we want you to come and be a part of that, uh, part of that with us. And so those are the four things that we, we want you to know because we've got a great, a great group of events happening and we want you to be able to participate in them as much as you can. Well, I see Sarah is here. Susan, Jill. Hey, Jill, former secretary. Good to have you joining us. And still, again, I told your husband, I need to come to Hawaii to, for a visit. Patrick's here. Good to have everybody. Ed, Kaylee, good to have you here. So we got a lot of people joining us tonight. We're really excited you're here uh, being a part of this. You know, I know, and JC, there you are. JC, here with us. What I wanted to talk about tonight is just very quickly is this shelter in place, this quarantining. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's, it's been long. Man, it seems like it's going on forever. And we just got word today that our governor has extended the shelter in place uh, through May 6th. So it's extended out there. I want to give you some encouragement. I believe the time is coming that we're going to be able to be freed out and, and roam around. But uh, since it's been so long, what I, I did is I wanted to talk about uh, some things that make you realize you've been in quarantine way too long. So what I've done is I, I visited with my daughters and we've come up with a top 10 list. And our top 10 list tonight is basically 10 reasons that you know that you've been in quarantine way too long. So what we want to do very quickly is we want to go over that top 10 list, okay? So why don't you come along with me as we look. Our top 10 reasons that you know you've been in quarantine too long. The first, number 10, is you've forgotten how to talk to people and you become jumpy when someone says hi to you in the grocery store. So that, that really uh, has affected us losing that talk. Number nine, you performed multiple TikTok dances with your kids and you don't even know what TikTok is. I had no idea about it, but I know people are doing it. Hey, Troy, brother, LeRae's joining us tonight. So LeRae, good to see you. Cindy, it's good to have you here with us too. The next one, number, number eight, is your Netflix has completely stopped asking if you're still watching because it already knows you are. You're not getting off of the couch and moving anywhere else. So that's number eight. The number seven reason you know is you've already fired yourself three times as your kid's homeschool teacher. And so we, we understand that one. So you know you've been in quarantine. Number six, your idea of a sporting event is timing your daughter as she makes laps in your house, trying to get her steps in without actually going outside. Now that's a personal one is, as we shared with you, Sherry, my daughter spends a lot of time walking through our living room trying to get her steps in. As a matter of fact, I think we're gonna have to replace the carpet as soon as this is over. She's worn her track out. But that's our idea of sporting events. Number five, the reason you know you've been in quarantine too long, your laundry loads have been drastically reduced because all you're doing is wearing the same pajamas every day. And I know some people that are doing that. Number four, you're beginning to worry that your toilet paper stash is being stocked out by your neighbors. Very vital there. Number three, your strong stance against corporal punishment is beginning to get shaky. Okay, now folks, that was a joke, all right? I'm not out, don't go around telling everybody, oh, the pastors think we ought to spank our kids. That was a joke, all right? But I bet you you've thought about it a little bit. Number two, the number two reason that you know you've been in quarantine too long, you can now speak Latin due to watching Father Brown issue last rites to seven seasons worth of murder victims. Wow. You know you've been hearing it over and over. So now, the number one reason that you know you've been in quarantine too long is your Pinterest creations are actually starting to look like they do in the pictures. You know you've been in quarantine too long. So that tonight is our top 10 list of reasons why you know you've been in quarantine far too long. We hope that uh, you're not going crazy. We hope you're staying, uh, you're, you're staying sane and uh, staying encouraged. But what I'd like to do tonight is you've heard my top 10 reasons, but if you've got some things that you realize you've been in quarantine way too long, why don't you uh, write them out here? Let us read some of them. And if, they, if we have some come up, uh, we will uh, get those on the air and you guys can be reading those uh, as they go through. So share with us how you know you've been in quarantine way too long. 
So anyway, again, I hope you've enjoyed our top 10 list. Well, what I want to do tonight really quickly is, as I shared with you, we have a special guest, some guests with us uh, here tonight. And uh, one of them is, uh, is, is Susan Thompson. And Susan is here with us tonight. And Susan, I want to welcome you and thank you so much for coming because I know when I invited you and or your husband, he was quick to decline. Yeah, so, so we appreciate you. Uh, Larry, it would have been all right. We would have had fun. I told him, I said, we're going to have fun. He said, well, good luck. Yeah. Have at it. So anyway, Susan, thank you for coming and joining with us tonight. And so uh, we're, I just wanted to bring you on and talk about a couple of events and a couple things that are going on. First of all, how are you handling things at your house with this quarantine? Well, my college career suddenly became online. Oh, yeah. And the three history classes online is no small thing that's a lot of lectures and papers that you don't get a lot of feedback about but so my world is very s similar to what it was but but on the same time it's completely changed right because larry's at home yeah I, so. I was about to ask you mentioned something yesterday about larry working at the home now yes larry is um on furlough but i have a s extensive honeydew list i think the whole house will be remodeled pretty quickly <laughs> but i'm um, when i left him tonight he was hanging gutters Oh, so, yeah. All right. So hopefully right. he's not on the ground when I get home with a broken something. Larry's going to be ready to go back to work, huh? Yes, he is. He is. But um, that Good. keeps him busy while I'm online with my classes. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> so uh, one, one thing I want you to share about is you and Larry teach one of our classes in yeah. Sunday school. And one of the things that we've done is that we have uh, uh, gone to Zoom mm -hmm. Sunday school conferences. Yes. And so all of our people are joining in now through the Zoom uh, technology and you guys conduct your Sunday school classes like that. How's that going? Really well, except he likes to go long and get into your time. So we've made that not happen anymore. <laughs> but actually we start 30 minutes early so everybody can come visit. Oh, okay. So we have some visiting time in the beginning so people can just chit chat and see each other. And you know, it's still we're only one or two people can be talking at the same time, but we get to hear what's going on in everybody's lives. And, right. and that's been really important to be able to connect with our classmates and we actually have more people coming online than we do in actual okay. Sunday school which is kind of interesting so we've been discussing a hybrid something after we get back to normal oh, okay all right so going along huh mm -hmm. all right Larry don't don't comment about the preacher going long anymore all right <laughs> all right so now he knows what I go yes. through every Sunday yeah, going he's long. like I didn't get to finish I'm like God said you were done <laughs> Well, do, I, do I need to get a kill switch? Well, actually, the internet went down five minutes before you were starting, and he he wasn't finished. And oh. the internet crashed, and he so he had to do it on Facebook in a note. That was God's way of I saying, so. Larry, listen to the preacher. It's <laughs> right. good. So anyway, well, awesome. So it's going well. And, yes. and And one of the things that we had talked about is extending it out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. From, the, from what we've been doing, maybe go a little bit longer uh, with this so people that are away could possibly join right. with what we're doing in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we don't want it to replace coming to actually being in no. Sunday school, which I don't think that's going to be a big problem because people are going to want to be together. Right. So we're, we're, we're excited about how you're doing the Zoom, and we want to encourage you that if you'll go to our, our webpage, that we have every week the list, of, I think we have six Sunday school classes that are going on right now at the same time. So if you can, you can pick one of those six and join into their Sunday school classes, and we'll look forward to that. Uh, hey, my niece is on. Hey, Rob, good to see you, Ann. Good to see you. I'm sorry. You're I, fine. I, I didn't eat there. So, uh, but we do want to encourage you to join in with our Sunday school classes. Now, the, the real reason I wanted Susan to come and be a part of tonight is that, as I shared with you, First Baptist West is doing a part of the M28 Ministries, which we know it as the Bridge Ministry. Right. That's how our people know it. But it's a, the M28 is the whole ministry that, that Jeff yeah. does. And so what we've done is, you know, that during this tough time, there's a lot of people in need. And so our church is joining in with them because Jeff feeds, uh, what do we say, 200 and 280 today. 280 today every, every day, six days a week, they're feeding people and they're needing a lot of help. So our church, man, I'm excited about this. Our church has stepped up and we're going to take one day a week yes. and it's going to be on Tuesday. Tuesday. And so Susan, uh, praise the Lord, has been so gracious to be our, our lead on that. And you talked about you know how busy you are already, but yet you still 
wanted to take part in this and you're heading this up. So what I wanted Susan to do tonight is we're asking for people to, to be a part of this and to help us as much as we can. But Susan, I want you to explain to them what, what is what is M28 Ministries doing right now over there? Right now, um, they've set up a socially distant compliant um, way to feed people. It's a come and take your meal back home. So they have six foot sections marked off. You walk through um, and they, they ask you how many and they prepare the plates and put them in a bag and send them and send you out the door and everybody kind of, it's a one way flow and it, so it's very safe. It's safe for the, the um, team. Everybody wears their masks and gloves. Okay. So if, if, if any of us, any of our church were going to go over there with you, mm -hmm. they would be inside away from the line of serving, right? Um, the serving line is inside where they, they do the right. plating is inside. So those folks are, there's three or four of them when I was there, they're wearing their gloves and their masks and, you know, everybody's very safe. And so it's, it's a limited contact with, with people in the public. Okay. So it, it is, it, it is. And the reason I wanted her to explain the structure is that it is safe. Yes. That we're, we're taking every <clears throat> precaution that you're not going to be put in harm's way in any way. Right. Uh, so the people that are coming to get the food are in a line outside still six feet apart mm -hmm. and they just ordered the number of plates so there's right. one person getting like six plates it so there's be. not six people right so so it's pretty safe and so we're, we're encouraging you that if you want to be a part of that to help us I talked to Jeff yesterday I went over there mm -hmm. uh, for for a short time before the funeral yesterday and talked to Jeff and he said that we could use people to help serve yes. two or three they don't need like six or seven because there's just not enough room right. Uh, to be a part of that so right. if you'd like to help but also then uh, as, as we see the structure and we see the need there for the food what could we as a church do what do we need to do to help you provide those meals well right now we're planning for 300 meals for next week um, okay. Will and David have volunteered to take care of the entree prep they're gonna make a spaghetti bake um, for 300 that's a lot of pans of food, but they're going to do it up here. That way, um, nobody has to worry about bringing a hot item. And then, so another thing when I talked to Jeff out there um, was instead of preparing the vegetables and then carrying them over hot, we can just take the cans over there and they can heat them up there. And then it keeps the juice from getting in our van, which is what <laughs> happened yesterday. Um, it's going to smell really good in a few days. Right. Um, and then we do a dessert or fruit and bread. And um, any extra bread they have, I've also kind of personally added some peanut butter and jelly every week because they make sandwiches for people to take home for another meal. The ones that they know are truly homeless and are, this is going to be their hot meal for the day and they need something else. So um, any extra bread that they have, they do that. Sara Lee has helped, but they're limited because bread's been a hot commodity. Right. Um, right. So that's what, um, so we need vegetables so a number 10 can the big one from sam's is three or four dollars depending on which one you get or seven of the regular cans that we would use at home would make one pan for anybody who wants to do that um and you don't have to cook it there's a place out in the hallway you just bring the can and set it down and go um if you want to bake a cake or brownies or whatever we have pans here at the church you can get so and that way we don't have to make sure to get it back to you and they're you know they're disposable and that, that just makes it easier on the team there because they right. don't want to misplace anything that belongs to someone either right. and so bread vegetables and desserts or fruit um carrie yates has informed me that her children said fruit is not a dessert that's a snack <laughs> so and i kind of agree with them but but it is an option for some people who who might prefer a, a fruit or that who that one might be an easier thing that they could donate okay now I know you said that Will is and, and David, I believe, mm -hmm. are doing next Tuesday the yeah. entree. Yeah, and that, well, the next two they've committed. Oh, the to. next two. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, basically, we need the vegetables, desserts, and mm -hmm. things like that. And if they can bring them Monday, anytime Monday, that way Tuesday, I'll take anything that's not cooked earlier, mm -hmm. and then they can bring the entrees closer to the actual serving time. Okay. And so we kind of figured that'd be easy. Well, and I, I do know that uh, some people brought desserts and things mm -hmm. on Monday night, uh -huh. Monday evening, or before we closed the yes. office and we took care of them. So our office hours are the same, so you can bring them in mm -hmm. uh, whenever you want, right? right? Yes. Okay. Now, if somebody wants to do it, mm -hmm. or they want to help, they want to help serve, or they want to make food, 
they contact you, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, and I need to give you my number. If anybody's looking in the church directory, it is not correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, my number is 678-9195. And I'll just take your name and number and we'll talk about what you, I, I will ask for a number that you think you'll make just so we don't want to make too much but we don't want to not have enough either right. because this is probably going to go on for several more weeks so we, sure. we don't want to wear us out but we want to do the, the proper amount right. right so um that's what i'll be doing and i will probably if anybody calls to volunteer give them jeff's number okay. directly that way they can talk because there's some there's some masking things that he wants them to make sure they understand okay so well one of the things I, I do know also is that whenever we are doing uh, the volunteering if you want to help serve now if you want to bring it up it doesn't matter but Jeff would like to know that if you're doing uh, want to help serve the meal that he needs to know by the Saturday prior to the Tuesday mm -hmm. so if you want to help then he needs to know by Saturday, mm -hmm. okay? All right, so is there anything else with this that, that you wanted to bring up? Because one of the things I want to encourage is, uh, again, as I always say, folks, if, a, if a, just a few people are doing this, it's a heavy load. But the more people that are doing it, the easier it is. So I want to encourage you, man, this is, a, this is an opportunity for the church yes. to be the church. It is. And we're, Jesus said, if people are hungry, feed them. Don't just pray for them. Praying for them is good, but if, you're, if they're hungry, feed them. And right. so, folks, we got we got some people that are struggling, and God has blessed us at First Baptist West. Mm -hmm. And so, I want to also encourage you as pastor that if 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 there's somebody that would like to be a part and maybe cook a meal, mm -hmm. cook something, but they said, "Boy, that gets expensive." Hey, we we have missions money. We'll we'll provide the food if you'll just come. Tell me what you need. Mm -hmm. We'll get it to you. Then you can fix it and bring it up. Whatever we have to do, we just want to make sure that people are being involved, and that one or two people, you and Larry, aren't receiving the bulk of the weight right. on this. We want to make sure it's a church ministry. Well, and the reality is this is more than a meal. This is an opportunity for prayer, one-on-one, -on -one, um, for folks to share their struggles, to have that human contact. Um, this is a population group that we may not come in contact with in our daily right. lives, and they're just as isolated as we are, but in a totally different way. Absolutely. And they, they uh, I know Jeff shared that People are sincerely wanting to pray now. Where before it was more of I got to go through the motions so I can get this this mm -hmm. thing that they're hoping to get. So <clears throat> God's using this to to touch people's lives. Amen, amen. And and He had told me that He's been praying with people and mm -hmm. taking time to pray. And so it's been a really really good deal. Well, Susan, I, I I want you to know as your pastor, I, I I'm honored and proud that you're doing this. And I know it's a, you've already got a busy time with your classes. So, folks, let's let's help her. Let's be the church. Let's let's come together and minister to these folks because they desperately are needing. This isn't something we just wanted to do. This is something we felt God compelled us over and over to do. We were trying to figure out ways, I think, to not do it, but God just kept us and, and said, mm -hmm. "We need you to do this." So, thank you for that. Now, before you go, though, I do, I do like to ask: Is there something that God's been showing you through this time? Um, slow down. <laughs> Yeah. Take time to worship. Um, we've been, well, we have our church services we watch. But then my, I've started, we started watching my sister's church in Georgia. Uh -huh. uh, my brother-in-law does a Monday night, um, let's talk about it, Bible study. We've got another church that we've been started watching. And really just taking time to worship and draw close to Him. We get so busy that we forget. Um, and to stay on a schedule, you got to get up and go to bed at the same time, yeah. or you, or you forget what day it is. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So oh, again, I appreciate it. Thank you for for giving of your time to come. I know you're busy, but you came and, and you're working, you're ministering, and so uh, we're just excited to be a part of what God is doing through the M28 Ministries. Again, the Bridge Ministry, as we really know it. So, uh, but we're we thank you so much, and folks, again, please help us in any way that you can, because there are people that are in desperate desperate needs. So Susan, thank you, thank you for coming and being a part of this with us tonight. So I, I, as Susan gets ready to leave here in just a second, I want to uh, get ready to share a verse of scripture with you and then just a quick thought. But before we do, I want to say, Caitlin is, Williams is watching, doing the news and watching us at the same time. Hey Sarge, Sarge is watching, uh, a friend of uh, from uh, from Moore. I love Sarge, man. He's a good guy. Danny, thank you. Uh, Tina, Marie is here. Elizabeth, secretary. Hey, Elizabeth, do you you see over over my head here? 
<laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Just wanted Elizabeth to see that. So, uh, anyway, is it is it frozen? Okay. All right. So it's again, but I wanted to share a verse of scripture with you, and then a quick thought, and then we're gonna ask Brother Troy to come and join us. But uh, tonight. Uh, what I wanted to read is, is a very familiar passage of Scripture that all of you know it, and it's Psalm 23. You know, Psalm 23 has been a, a comforting chapter throughout the ages. And so we're looking tonight at this, and I want to just read it to you, and, and I think it's very appropriate for, for our time right now. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul, and he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever." You know, again, 20, the 23rd Psalm is just something that's been a comfort to a lot of people. And, and as we look tonight, I, I want to share a couple of thoughts with you. First of all, in, in, in this text, we see God is absolutely showing us His heart for His people. And I, that heart, the great thing is that the heart of God hasn't changed from the time uh, the psalmist wrote this to today. God's heart is still for his people, even in these very difficult times. And a couple things I want us to look at is that, there, there's, uh, that we should never question God and, and how he feels toward us. Because we look in here and we see there's a couple things. First of all, it says that he makes me lie down. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He comforts me. He prepares us a table and he anoints us. So everything that we see here is it's God toward us. You notice that we're the sheep. We're not, nothing is required of us. It, he is the one giving. So I want to encourage you through these difficult times that, to realize that uh, the shepherd is the giver. The sheep are the receivers. And that same God who did this for the psalmist here is the same God that will do that for all of us that we continually are receiving because Romans 5, 8 says that God is the one that proves his love toward us, not that we prove our love toward him, but we, he proves his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so again, he gives, he gives continually. And we, we see basically as receivers that through this difficult time, you know what our biggest, our, our biggest concern should be? is not what we're going to be having brought to us, not what, we're, we're not what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, not what we're going to do. Our biggest concern throughout this difficult time should be that we stay close to God. That's our concern. So as your pastor, and, and if you're not a member of our church, but even as your friend, I want to encourage you to stay close to God because it is through them, through, through doing these things, that God is going to take care of us. Because His heart hasn't changed. He's still today going to allow you to lie down in green pastures. He's still going to lead you beside the still waters. He's still going to restore your soul. He's still going to comfort you. He's still going to prepare a table for us. And he's still going to anoint us. That God hasn't changed. So let me encourage you tonight to just stay close to him through reading of the word, through prayer, through worship, joining us on Sunday morning at 1045 for our live stream, joining our Sunday school classes, joining us here on Wednesday night or any way that you can get connected, I want to encourage you, your number one priority, your biggest concern throughout all of this is that you stay close to God. Can I pray with you real quick over that? And I want to be praying for you all this time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for your blessing. And God, we thank you for just allowing us to to minister to people, to be ministered to. And God, we thank you for your love that you have for us. And that God, you have not required anything of us. All that we do is stay close to you. And Lord, I know in these troubling times, it gets difficult. So I ask, Lord, that you help every one of your children to draw them close to you, Father, so that they can feel your presence, they can feel your power. The God, that you could restore us 
when we get down. You could restore us when we seem to maybe lose out on some hope. And, and, and Lord, we just begin to focus more on the, the situation around us that, Lord, we can focus on you. God, you've proven your love to us over and over again. And I want to praise you for that. But Lord, I want to pray for your people. I want to pray for our church. I want to pray for the other churches in Lawton. That, God, you would bless them and work through them. And, God, that we could stay strong and know, Lord, you're there with us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, again, let me, let me encourage you. Man, trust in God with all that he is. Um, Want to welcome again Ashton. Ashton Baxter is here. Uh, good, to, good to see her. I haven't seen her since Falls Creek. So it's good to have her with, with us. And Tina is here and Marie. Susan has now joined us. So it's good to have you with us. John and Wendy, it's good to have you all. But again, let me encourage you. Just, just stay close to God through this. And I promise you, it, it's going to be good. We'll get through this, okay? Well, I want to take a few more minutes and uh, welcome our next guest here with us tonight. He's a, he's a good friend of mine, and uh, uh, Brother Troy Taylor is our Director of Missions, and he so graciously offered uh, to, to join me when I extended the offer to him. He accepted, and, and he came on with us and very looking very uh, uh, very forward to, to visiting with him. Now, uh, not only are we good friends, but we have a great connection together, uh, even before we we really realized this. But Brother Troy and I both had the privilege of pastoring First Baptist Tipton. Amen. 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 And uh, Brother Troy was before me. So, folks, you want to talk about pressure? I had to follow this man up, no. and uh, he was a pastor before me. And here I come along, this old country boy from Northeast Oklahoma, and. Man, I, I just hope I didn't destroy everything you built up while oh, you were sure. there. But uh, Brother Troy is a great friend of mine and does a great job as our director of missions. And Brother Troy, thank you again for coming and being a part of this with us. Thank you, Brother Harold, for having me. Well, we're, we're honored to have you. And, and also, Lorraine, your wife, yeah. a wonderful lady. She was our secretary here for a while. Yeah. Uh, Lorraine, I know you're watching, so thank you and love you. And uh, you want to tell him to keep smiling? <laughs> yeah, that was a little inside joke, Larry. You'll get that one. Keep smiling. Smile I'm more, Brother to Troy. Smile more, smile more yeah. Brother Troy. So anyway, but Larry was our secretary here. Great lady, and uh, I know she worked Thank real you. hard through the uh, association with the ladies' ministry. Yes. Uh, she does a lot because we host some of those things, yeah. and so we're excited to get to be a part of that. So I just want to ask you, how are you doing through all of this? Brother, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I mean... You know, it's just like you've been saying all night. And by the way, you're a great host. Oh, gosh. Well, thank you. Whenever, if, God, <laughs> if God, when God uh, calls you to maybe not pastor full time, you've got a job in being a TV host. So, uh, Dude, I'm um, going to Academy. <laughs> I'm working at Academy. Amen. No, but thank Amen. you for that. You're, you're too kind. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank no, you. I, uh, it's just like everybody else, brother. We're, we're good. We're just okay. trying to do what what we can to just to be a part of the bigger picture. So, Amen. Well, you're doing a great job, and I'm honored to have you as our director of missions, but also even more as, as a friend, because, folks, I really rely on this man a lot. I visit with him all the time, and so I use up a lot of his time, and I, you're, you're, he's always so gracious, and you're gracious to Amen. me, so thank, thank you for you. that. I want to ask you, this is your first time as DOM, right? Yes. Okay, how long were you a pastor before becoming a DOM? Uh, a little over 25 years. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's that's my heart, and yeah. that's 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 what I God called me to. That's what I know. But but then I I sense Lorraine. I sense God's call to to this different platform or, or type of ministry to to be a director of missions. So okay, yeah. So how was the transition from pastor to DOM? It's tough, brother. I'm still <laughs> transitioning. I think. Uh, they tell us, uh, some of the guys that's been doing this for a long time s says that this is one of the most undefined job there is, but um, it's been good. I mean, you know, just just knowing knowing that you're doing what you feel God's called you to do is right. all that matters. So okay. it's been good. good. It's a great association. No, no. What, what did you, uh, she said you're funny. I don't think it's you or me. I don't know. Ray did. I don't know. But, okay. Before you became a pastor, though, yeah, what what, what did you do? Just briefly tell us what you did before becoming a pastor. Yeah, well, um, I did a few things, but yeah. um, immediately before I became a pastor, uh, I worked with the government 
and uh, I, w I was in the Air Force for a while and then worked with the, the, the Secret Service, presidential support as a canine handler. My, it's all about the dogs, Brother Harold. <laughs> I, I'd work on an ice cream truck if I could have a dog. So, right. um, But I worked a bomb dog and, and got to do that, which was a huge blessing. And uh -huh. um, as, as you know, everything we do, it seems like God is using that now right. for us to do what we're doing now. So, yeah, right. yeah I, had that, I had that privilege. Yeah, you did. And it was great. Uh, hey, Tyler McDowell is here, one of my youth. Former youth, he's a pastor now. Tyler, good to have you. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing, one thing that I, I I want to do is one one night before we get to end all this, or we have to end all this. Yeah. Who knows if we'll keep going? But I would love to have Brother Troy come on and just take some time to share your testimony. Amen. Because it is, folks, you, you you really need to hear this man's testimony. God did a great work through Amen. his wife to prepare him to come to Christ and. And the things that you did prior, it just, it's just a great testimony. So God even laid on my heart uh, this afternoon as I was preparing for this mm. to encourage you to maybe come back in the next week or so and okay. be willing to share your testimony if you'd be willing to do that. Yeah, God, God's been, God's been so good to me. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, folks, I promise you, you will not be uh, disappointed in hearing his testimony. So as you now transition over to the DOM mm -hmm. position from the pastorate. Mm -hmm. uh, how has that affected your life? Oh, in, in great ways. Um, you know, I know some people think I'm biased, but I've, I believe with all my heart that here in Comanche Cotton Baptist Association, which we have 58 churches, you right. know, Comanche County, Cotton County, I feel we have uh, the best pastors on the map. You know, godly men um, that that love the Lord Jesus, stand for Him, and then we have all these different congregations, just full of people, just great people, and uh, so it's just just being able to now, you know, go and visit different churches, right? Meet other brothers serving in the ministry. Uh, uh, I love pastors, and I think I kind of know. Right. Maybe some of the things they go through. Right. So, um, but then just to get to meet all these wonderful people in our in our churches, you yeah. know, and hear their story and what God's doing. So it's and I get a chance to speak in in different churches, and you know I miss that part. I miss right. the preaching and teaching, but but just being around God's people, I think. Amen. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and like I said, you do a great job, and I know you're a. You basically, you're a past our pastor's pastor. Yes, sir. And you really uh, you have a heart for us, and and I want you to know what that means to me and Thank you. and to our other pastors that I hear hear them as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, Brother Troy does a great job uh, leading us and ministering to us because uh, sometimes as a pastor you need a pastor. Yeah. And so he he is my pastor. So uh, I appreciate that very much. You talked about our churches. What are you seeing it through our churches through the last month since right. this all has changed and life as we know it has basically been put on hold for a while? Yeah. What have you noticed about the churches of Comanche Cotton Association? Well, the, first of all, and mainly, I've been greatly encouraged. Mm -hmm. um, one thing this has done is it's put all of us in the same pool, right? right? I mean, we're all trying to navigate this literally uncharted waters right. and but I've been encouraged because as a whole all of our pastors have settled into this new norm I mean mm -hmm. we know it's going to pass right but and and I'm seeing our pastors and our churches and our leadership staff and members doing things that maybe some of them have never done before right and congregations stepping up and and supporting you know so I've been greatly encouraged by that. And, but I also realize that everybody's context is different, mm -hmm. right? I mean, right. Right. First Baptist West, you know, has, has, a, has a context and a ministry that may be different, say, from, you know, Temple First Baptist Church. Right. So just getting to see how, how everybody's context is different, but every one of our churches are stepping up to the plate and just... 
um, embracing this, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and just following Jesus' leadership in this. So it, it's been really encouraging. It's not easy, right? right. It's, it, this is tough on everybody. Mm-hmm. But I think we're realizing what's really important. Right. I think it's good that the church has been forced out of the building, so to speak. Amen. Yeah. But probably the last thing I would say on that is I'm hearing from pastors doing things they've never done before, and they're going to keep doing some of these things. Right. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, they're not going to quit just because this COVID-19 ban has been lifted. It's it's good. good. You know, in the, mid, in the middle of this craziness... <laughs> It's just, I, I'm just encouraged by what I see people doing. So churches are, are rising to the occasion. I think see. so. All right, good. I think so. And I'm seeing a spirit of cooperation. Yeah. You know, like I know you well enough to, to say this. I know if I had another pastor that was needing something, maybe, maybe just technical advice or mm-hmm. I'm seeing a spirit of cooperation. All of our pastors are willing to help other pastors or right. other churches you know, um, I don't know. I'm just seeing the true family of God operating as as followers of Christ, and and it's exciting. Yeah, you know, Brother Troy, I keep I keep mentioning that um, back when Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers, and his comment to them when they were before him was, "You you meant this as evil toward me, but right. God worked it to good for Amen. salvation." Amen. And and so I'm I'm believing that. I believe with all my heart, Satan wanted to use this to destroy the church, right. to weaken the church, to right. shake the very foundation. But I, I think what he meant for evil, God has now turned it into an amazing thing because of the the, the the presentation of the gospel has been done now differently than we've ever done it before. Well, and you bring up a good point. I don't think there's ever been a time in human history, at least in modern history, where the gospel message of Christ is reaching... The, the, these numbers, right? I mean, you know, you. I, I was talking with a buddy the other day. He said he's he's attended more church than he ever has in his life. You know, <laughs> um, getting to watch different preachers. But I mean, it's going right. it's going all over the world. So yeah, God's turned it for good. Amen. Amen. Well, one of the things that I've enjoyed, as I mentioned it before, is uh, my brother is a pastor of a church in Northeast Oklahoma, mm-hmm. and I never get to hear him preach and, and stuff. But he does his live stream at ten o'clock. Mm-hmm. So I'm here. We go through everything we set up, and then at ten o'clock, I go into my office and I get to worship with my brother That's and hear great. him preach. So th- th- there've been some really, really good things that have, have gone on, and we're excited Amen. about what God is doing. And I, again, I thank you for how you're working and supporting uh, all of our churches. And, and I know it's going to go very well, very well. Uh, I, I could sit here and talk to you all night, but, uh, <laughs> but we've been going wild. But uh, I, next time I do want you to come and talk, share even more time with, okay. with your, your testimony. But something I want to ask you is, throughout this personally, mm-hmm. because I know as DOM you shared how you work through the churches and all that, but personally, what has God been doing for you and maybe your your wife or your family through this time? Amen. And, and I know you said you had a verse of scripture that God brought in your life. So yeah. I want I want to I want you to put all that together and okay. what's God been doing to you for you personally through this? Well, uh, this is all part of the sanctification, right? Yeah. And boy, I have a lot for God to deal with. <laughs> um, God has been showing me um, just. Um, Really, what's important? Yeah, you know, things. And it was mentioned earlier. Things, things we don't think about in our normal day-to-day lives. Uh, how important His Word is. How important uh, worshiping Him is. Right. How important our families are. Um, and and it's revealed some things in me that that God's al- God's dealing with. You know, there's all of us have insecurities and fears and and uh that we can cover up sometimes this is right there's been a lot of things unveiled and so um i'm th- i don't like it necessarily <laughs> but i'm thankful right for what god is doing in my life my my wife's life my kids yeah. um and and i want to share i just want to share a couple of scriptures oh, absolutely. out of please do out of psalms 46 which has been dear to me okay um Beginning in verse 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. 
Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart uh, uh, of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. And, and then I want to drop down to, to verse 10. This, this has been especially, it, this hits on what you just asked me. God says, be still and know that I am God. Amen. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. That's what he has showed me. Amen. Slow down. Don't stop working. Right. That's not what be still means, you know. Right. Yeah. But just just know that that, you know, I love you, God says. I'm Amen. here. I'm yeah. very present. Um and that just dispels fear. Amen. So yeah. It's and, good. Amen. And and through this time, the last thing we need to do as Christians is have fear. Amen. Uh because we have the God that provides for That's us. Right. Amen. That's right. So, man, I, I could just sit here and listen to you <laughs> preach all night and, yeah. and talk. So, again, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Dwayne Baxter is watching, and he asked, he said, uh, Kathy wants you to come and speak about your trip to the Holy Land. Yeah. Sometime. Oh, that's another thing. God opened up a, a time okay. for Lorraine yeah. and I recently. In fact, we got back just in time. Uh, before all this blew up. You almost up. got trapped in yes. the <laughs> Yeah, I was almost quarantined in Israel. Oh, so, my. Uh, no, it was such a good, yeah, but uh, that, that, that was a great time for Lorraine and I to get to spend. Over so how there. long did you get to stay over there? It was a 10-day trip. Okay. Yeah, I think we had seven, eight days actually in country, and then the other was travel days. But, right. uh, yeah, it was so good. Good, good. Well, maybe maybe the next time you come, we'll, we can even add that okay. in. So we might just turn this into the Troy Taylor <laughs> no, show. No, let Troy, no. Let the, do Brother Troy talk about By the way, I loved your top ten. Oh, did you? Yeah, <laughs> that's good. And and the Father Brown thing, now I'm going to have to watch it. So, okay, yeah. yeah, watch it. Just don't watch it all seven seasons no. in, in a week and a half. Okay. It'll kind of ruin you. <laughs> It'll ruin you. Amen. But uh, but thank you, brother. And I Thank love you, you and love you're a good you. friend. And man, I'm, I'm honored that you even gave you your time tonight. No, no, to come no. And this hang is out with my and, uh, blessing. And I love you, brother. Well, thank you. You're a dear friend to me and to my family. And uh, I thank you for your leadership. Amen. In this well, thank you. I, that means a lot. And to any of you, uh, Tipton, that maybe have watched now or you're going to watch in a little bit. This is the team, man. This, this, we did this to you. Whatever, whatever you got going on, we, yeah. we had. A big Les part of is that. fixing it, right? Yeah, Les, Les. Les is preparing, repairing <laughs> what you and I did. So Les, get after him, buddy. Yeah. We, we left you. We left you a good mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a good church, brother Troy. Thank you, and God right. bless you. Thank you. So as we get ready to wrap it up tonight, I, I again want to thank uh, everyone for coming and tuning in with us. Man, we had a we've had a lot of people on here watching and you're commenting and uh, telling some things that are going on, and that's really why we do this. We just want to have fun and we want to have Bible study and uh, just just to have some some time to be lighthearted and to give something in the middle of the week to just step back and go. And so that's what we hope for this, and we want to be an encouragement to you. We don't want to waste any of your time, but we've had a lot of uh, uh, people watching. Again, hey, I've got uh, Sandy's watching. Uh, Robin Augustine, one of my youth, uh, former youth, uh, great young lady. She's, she's watching. Robin, how are you? Tell, tell your sister and every, your mom and dad hi. Uh, thank you for joining in with us as well. So, man, we're reaching people, amen, and this amen. is exciting. Uh, to just be able to connect with you. And, and again, that's why we're doing this. But before we end tonight, I want to take some time to encourage you uh, to be a part of your church, however you have to be. If you're not a member of First Baptist West, we want to encourage you to get connected and stay connected to your church, their live stream or anything that they have going on. But if you have a church that doesn't is not able to do this yet, then join us on Sunday morning. We're not going to ask anything of you. We're not going to ask you to stay connected to us. We just want to give you an opportunity to worship and, and to feel God's presence working in your life. So we, we want to thank you uh, for, for doing that and invite you to become be a part. But men, stay focused and stay connected to your church. To those at First Baptist West, stay connected to what God is doing because God is moving, man. He's doing some great things. So tonight, I want to pray over all of this, but I want to pray a confident prayer, asking God, I believe he's got this. 
I believe he's going to do some great work. And so, and then we're going to wrap it up from there. Um, but anyway, it's going to be a great time. I want to remind you of tomorrow, uh, Thursday, with our, uh, with our scavenger hunt. We're going to have a great time with that. So please contact the church so that you can be connected to our children, our preschool, and our youth uh, private pages. And that's where we have all that stuff going on. But let me pray with you before we go. Father, <clears throat> in Jesus' name, we just come to you and we thank you for your love and your grace. God, we thank you for working through us in all situations, providing for us, and then allowing us to minister to provide for others. And so, Lord, it's with that that we give you praise tonight. Even in the midst of these struggles, we thank you for the opportunities you're giving us and the confidence that you're giving the church. And so, Father, I pray that you would allow us to continue to serve you in the ways that we have. And God, I thank you for the people of First Baptist West, the, the, the church that I get to have the privilege of pastoring, mm. and their faithfulness to your service, their faithfulness in staying connected to our church, to our deacons who are reaching out to their families, to our, to our directors who are reaching to their teachers and providing opportunities for the kids and for the students, Lord, to continue to grow, to, to, to the rest of the staff here that, Lord, work diligently to keep these things going like they are. And Father, for our people, for our people to stay, that are staying faithful through giving, through supporting our ministries, through encouraging us as the staff, God, just bless the, our efforts. And God, we do take a moment and pray for our leadership. God, we pray for our president. We pray for those who are advising him. Lord, we pray mm -hmm for the Congress and the Senate, the Lord, you would just somehow bring all their, their, their troubles and, Lord, the, their differences and somehow, Lord, work them to, to work together for our nation and, God, protect them. We pray for our governor. God, I lift him up to you, and I know the pressures that he's under from both people that want to get things back to normal and those who want to hold off. God, I know the pressure he's under, so I pray for wisdom for him, and guidance, Lord. I thank you that he has a testimony to be a man of God. And Lord, I pray that he would uh, follow your guidance as our governor. And the Lord, I want to I bring it down to, to our leadership in, in Lawton, to our mayor and our city manager. God, I, I lift up our, our city council to you. And Father, I pray that you would guide those men and women that you would protect them and wrap them up in your presence, Lord, so that the fiery darts would not have the effect that, they, that I know they would want to have on our leadership. God, give them wisdom, give them knowledge, give them understanding, but most of all, God, give them peace and give them leadership. And Lord, we lift up our city council to you, our, our mayor and our city manager and all those that work in the city. That, Father, you would just, let us see you be glorified through their lives. I thank you that I know their, their hearts, two of their hearts, Lord. I know they're men of God who desire to be pleasing to you. So, Lord, lift them up and encourage them. And, Father, let us see as we go through this time and as we look back to see this was an amazing time. That, Father, you and your name was lifted up and glorified. And Father, we'll give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, thank you for coming again and joining us tonight. Uh, the Kinders are watching. Barbara, Barbara Cawthorn from Tipton is watching. Hey, Barbara. John Collison, he's joining. Hey, John, thank you for, for joining us tonight. Uh, so, anyway, I could go on, but thank you guys. Thank you, everyone, for being here. John, thank you for your uh, diligence and leading in this and keeping keeping us looking good, I guess. So uh, anyway, but I, I want to say again, God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. And I pray that God would continue to restore you and that you would stay close to him. We want to join in again, 1045 Sunday morning or 930 for those Sunday school classes. And we're going to have a great time. God is still working. Amen. God bless you and good night.